M. Legacy Moon, and this is True Crime and Mysteries. Welcome back, current subscribers, new subscribers, and those of you who are here for the very first time. Welcome. Before we get into today's video, I would like to ask you to please make sure that you thumbs up this video. And remember what your mama taught you, sharing is caring. So if you don't mind, spread it around. Today's topic is going to be Keefe D. So let's get into it. The man that you see before you in the middle is Dwayne Keefe D. Davis. And he is the man who has been accused of the unaliving of Tupac Shakur, who is pictured on my left, your right, and on my right, your left, is Sean P. Diddy, brother, love, Diddy, and however many names he continues to give himself combs. I just pretty much have him here in the picture for the shade of it all. Some of you might be aware and others you others of you may not be aware that uh, Keefe D participated in some undercover work back in the year 2009 after he was caught trafficking in large amounts of some uh, street uh, pharmaceuticals by the LAPD task force. Now, I guess because of this, he realized that he was probably in some hot water. So he decided to get on a plane alongside a LAPD uh, law enforcement officer and fly to New York. And the reason he did this was to get some corroborating evidence into the conspiracy that Sean Combs had something to do with the unaliving of our beloved Tupac Shakur. Another individual who was targeted in this investigation, this, as they call it, by coastal LAPD undercover operation, was a gangster by the name of Eric Von Zip Martin. Now, he is a gangster from Harlem. I don't know which gang. I started to do a little bit more digging to find out which gang, but I felt like that wasn't necessary, as I like to report the news and not become the news. Now, as the story is being told... Um, it didn't quite work out that way for Mr. Uh, Von Zip to be implicated in this because he, he was out of the, the pharmaceutical business. And so that turned them on to his nephew. And I don't know what his name is and not interested in that either. Now, if you're thinking in your head, Legacy Moon, what does that have to do with Tupac and all of that? Well, I don't know. I'm just telling you the story as it's been told to me. So I guess this street pharmacist business thing wasn't going too well. So they decided that, you know, we'd get into the Tupac business because it is alleged that uh, Sean Puffy Combs put a hit out on Suge Knight and Tupac. Can you believe it? Well, I can, but but between the the drugs and and the the contract for hire type of situation, it is said that Diddy's name appears seventy seven times. That's a seven and a seven in legal documents. And one particular moment included in these transcripts is of old Keefe D accusing Puffy of putting the hit out on the two moguls. 
I don't know, is Suge Knight a mogul? I, I don't know, but uh, anyway. But the only thing that Keefe D could really offer us of as proof that Diddy may have had something to do with this perhaps hit is his word because that I, from what I have read and researched, I don't see like direct links. Now, I've got my own theories on Tupac's case and Biggie's case, but those are my theories and I'll keep them to myself. But um, other than his hot air, I don't know that there was any like technical proof that could be upheld in a court of law that implicates anybody or whoever in what happened on that night. But before I continue on with the story, I will say that between all of the bureaus, boroughs, however you pronounce that word, you know, what they use in New York uh, to identify the different areas, um, NYPD found it very explosive that they found pieces of paper and documentation that Diddy encouraged Biggie to write uh, certain songs that felt beefy, you know, between, I guess, the two coasts. Who knows? I, I don't see why they find that fascinating because rappers have been beefing for years, even ones who lived in New York, you know, Brooklyn, bed you know, just, you know, so only to the untrained eye is this like really something fascinating. That is the untrained eye of rap. But let's get into why I'm really here. Now, y'all, that first five minutes that I did, you know, it was, you know, a little bit of what I researched along with a little bit of dramatic licensing, I guess you could say, to get me to this point. I first want to say that I am a very big fan of Tupac and a very big fan of Biggie. And I don't think rap has been the same since they left this earth. I cannot believe the nerve of O'Keefe D being angry because he wants to be let out of jail, you know, because him sick and old. And I'm going to read the very beginning of this article that uh, one of the articles I found. It says, Sparks flew in court Tuesday as a Nevada judge rebuked a defense attorney and an ailing former Los Angeles area gang leader lashed out against prosecutors during his renewed effort to be freed from jail to house arrest ahead of his trial in the 1996 unaliving of hip-hop legend Tupac Shakur. Now, I guess Keefe D is a bit mad because uh, last month, Judge Carly Kearney rejected Keefe D's bid to have a hip-hop music figure put up a hundred and twelve five hundred thousand dollars to obtain his seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar bail bond. Wow, his bond is lower than Nesto Williams. I wonder who this uh, hip hop uh, figure is who is going to put up this hundred and uh, some odd uh, hundred and twelve some odd thousand dollars. That's the name I want. So, but anyway, let me tell you what, what this judge, what this judge Carney did first, she expressed some serious doubts about this source that O'Keefe D's funds was going to be coming from. And she scolded the defense attorney. She further accused him of playing up the case to keep media attention on one of hip hop, hip hop music's most Enduring mysteries. Well, let me tell you, he don't have to do that because we're going to stay informed no matter what. 
we have been waiting since the 90s to get an answer on this. So we certainly aren't going to uh, let it fly by the wayside now. You know, Judge, I got something for you. Eyes, all eyes are on you. <laughs> Judge Carney further went on to say, it seems like your plan, your end goal here is to make some kind of show for the press of this trial. No, she didn't, but yes, she did. When this thing goes to trial, I am telling you, people are going to be watching that trial more so than they are watching that YSL fiasco that seems to be going on. You know, that's going to make a pretty good movie or book one day, you know, that YSL stuff. But I digress. Of course, you know, the, the defense attorney had to come back and say, that's not my end game here, your honor. My end goal is to win the trial. If they want to follow me with cameras, they can do that. Now, this attorney could play coy if he might, but we're not going to forget that it was just in the British tabloids about how he was fielding out offers for a film crew to follow him working on this case. I mean, this article quoted the defense attorney calling Tupac Shakur's death a legacy legend case and invoking the memory of Johnny Cochran. No, he didn't. But yes, he did. Then O'Keefe D wanted to fire some shots at Greg. I think his name is Ketting, Greg Ketting. He wrote that book uh, some time ago about the unaliving of both Tupac and Biggie. I don't know. I guess uh, Keefe D was complaining about some boxes that they got from from him on information that he got on the case. I don't know. It didn't make much sense. And so that it won't sound like I'm rambling, I'm going to read what he said. Keefe D said, Mr. Greg Ketting had those boxes at his house for 15 years in his attic doing all kinds of TV interviews. He broke a proper agreement and he broke the law, all kinds of stuff. You know, the Mr. Sick ailing Keefe D can't be bothered with sitting in jail, even though he is accused allegedly of um, unaliving someone. You know, it's everybody's fault but his own that he's where he's at in the first place. But he, Keefe D, he still wasn't done complaining. You know, he was complaining about the prosecutors. Uh, I think it's a uh, Dia Jamayo and uh, Palau. He accused them of trashing his family. So that's it. That's all. There you have it. But before I go, I am going to leave you with the, the parting words that O'Keefe D had for about the uh, prosecuting attorneys. It Y'all, I was about to say prostituting attorneys. Y'all remember that? I'm always bringing that up on the Rugrats when, when Angelica. But anyway, I, there I go digressing again. But uh, here's the quote that he said. He says, they not only ugly on the outside, but they ugly on the inside, too. These two dudes right here. 